But let's slip into Abraham now. And I wonder who God said, Abraham, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your son and I want you to sacrifice. And he go, huh? What? I mean, that would have been my thought. Really? You want me to do what here? You know? You got to... But it wasn't Abraham's response. Abraham had faith well beyond what I have. Well beyond, I think, what a lot of Christians could have. And this was a test of faith. So God wanted to confirm the faith of Abraham. So he gave him a task that he knew would cut to the heart of any Israeli father. Because all that you work for goes down to your son. And now God's telling him to take his son, the son of the promise, and to sacrifice him. Genesis 22, 1 through 19. Now it came to pass after these things. What things had happened? After all the mess down at Sodom and Gomorrah and all this other stuff, things have settled down. Abraham is here. It's quiet. You know, God sometimes needs to get you in that quiet moment. You know, think that it's really crazy all the time. And then you have that peaceful moment. You know, it's in those quiet moments, that's when he speaks to you. That God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, here am I. Now, that's more than just a statement. That's not just saying, yeah, I'm here right now. Yes, Father, whatever you want. Here I am. Then he, God, said, Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there a burnt offering on one of the mountains, I shall tell you. He didn't even know where he was going. He said, just go to Moriah, and then when you get there, then I'll tell you where you're going, what mountain you're going to. So Abraham rose when? Early. Early in the morning. You know, you're going to start a trip. I don't know about you, but when I'm going to start a trip, I want to get up early in the morning. I want to get an early start because I get to find, especially if I know I've got a ways to go. He saddled his donkey and he took two of his young men because he knew he was going to need help on this trip. Remember, Abraham's over a hundred years old at this point. He's not some young man headed out on this trip. And he took his son Isaac and he split wood. Notice he didn't tell his sons or his workers to split wood. No, Abraham, have you ever split wood? Well, you got to take the axe. You've already cut it in chunks, but now you're breaking it up into pieces so you can throw it in the fireplace. He did it himself. I have kind of a thing I like doing in the mornings. And at my last church, I was downstairs. It was early in the morning, and I'm preparing the Lord's Supper. I got all the little things out. And one of my ladies comes in and goes, Pastor, what are you doing? Well, fixing the Lord's Supper. That's my job. <laughs> And I says, I appreciate that you've done this for a long time. I says, but I really have this feeling today. I need to do this myself. Abraham had a feeling he needed to do it himself. This job that God had gave him was weighing heavy on his heart. So he was going to complete all the steps of it himself. He split the wood for the burnt offering and he rose and he went to the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. God took him to the place where God didn't even have to tell him where the place was. Abraham, God made it obvious. This is where I want you to go and offer for me. You know, sometimes God makes those obvious things in our life. Sometimes we have to sit there and pray a lot, you know, and wait to hear from the Holy Spirit, wondering what do you want me to do. And then sometimes it's just right there in front of our face. This is one of those times. So now 
I want you to see this picture here. Here's this young boy with Abraham, an old man. He's got the fire, he's got the sticks, but where are the wood for the offering? It's, it's on the sacrifice's back. What's that a picture of? Jesus had to carry his own cross. He had to tote his own cross. This is a picture of what is going to happen in the future. He is showing Abraham in a way what this promise I have given you of being a blessing for the whole world is all about. And it starts right now. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and he laid it on Isaac his son. What a picture. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife and the two went together and Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father... And he says, here am I, my son. And he said, look, the fire, the wood. But where is the lamb for the offering? Mm -hmm. He knew the procedure. He'd grown up with this. He'd gone to sacrifices before. He know, knows how it works. And he's looking around and says, I don't see the lamb. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. So the two of them went together and they came to a place which God had told him and Abraham built the altar. Now, when he says he built the altar, one of the things that in the Jewish, uh, God said, if you're going to build me an altar, you're not to build it of cut stones, neatly stacked. No, you're to build it out of rocks. Raw material. I don't want something that you have spent time and you've cut it up. No, I want you to pick up rocks and I want you to stack them together to make my altar. Because if you cut a bunch of stone, you've ruined it. You've polluted it. You just get regular stones and you make me an altar. So here's Abraham looking around and picking up stones and setting them in place and getting it all just right. And then taking the wood and laying it just right on top of the altar. And Abraham built an altar, and he placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son, and he laid him on the altar upon the wood. Can you imagine what's going through Isaac's mind right now? Imagine he looked at Abraham and says, oh, Dad, what? what's going on here? Why are you putting me on this? And Abraham stretched out his hand and he took the knife to slay his son. Now that's where I have a hard time. God has never asked anybody at any time to offer human sacrifice. That's a pagan thing to do. That's far from what we do. That's far from what was normal for Jewish. He, he's being asked to do something totally outside of what God would only ask anybody to do. But you know what? Abraham believed enough in God that if he slayed his son, that somehow God would return his son so he could complete the sacrifice. That's faith. To say, regardless, God, you told me to do this, I'm going to do exactly what you tell me to do. That's faith I probably would not be able to have with my son. But Abraham had that faith that God could return his son from him. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. Here am I. I'm here doing exactly what you told me. No matter how much it's killing me to do this, I'm here doing exactly what you told me to do. And, God, and he said, God said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Hear the word fear of God. 
You trust God and you fear Him enough that you're going to do whatever He tells you to do. You know, we're supposed to love God. But you need to fear a holy God when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. He is still a just God. And He will bring upon you things that won't be good for you if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. No matter how outrageous it seems what He asks you to do. And He said, do not lay your hand on the lap or do anything to Him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. He was at that point. He had the knife. He had it raised. He was ready to kill his son because God told him to do it. And God stayed his hand and said, you're not going to kill him. I just want to know if you would. I want to know if you trusted me enough to go through what I told you to do. But now I know you do. It's sealed for God the love that Abraham had for him. Even in the most trying moments, it's sealed for him. That Abraham truly trusted him in whatever. Go back to the picture before that. So, here's the picture that God wanted us to see out of this. Abraham was willing to slay his own son just as God gave his only son to be slain. He knew now that Abraham had the same heart that he had. That he was willing to offer everything that God. God does not ask us to do things. He's not willing to do himself. I have a thing with my kids. They've seen me scrub the deep sink. They've seen me sweep and mop the floors. They've seen me do the hard safety wiring. The worst jobs. They've watched me do it. So when I ask them to do it. It's not something I'm asking them to do because I'm too good to do it. They've seen me do it. That's the way God is. God asks you to do things, sometimes tough things, but it's not something He either wouldn't or hasn't already done. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by the horns. That in itself is amazing. Because rams are pretty agile. That's God's work right there. That in the right place, at the right moment, just happened to be, right. a ram catches his horn in the thicket and gets stuck. So Abraham went and took the ram. And he offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide. Isaac asked, where's, where's the lamb? The Lord provided the ram. In the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. In a way, this picture shows that God gave Isaac back to Abraham because he was right at the point of dying. And that is a fore image of Jesus who God allowed to die on a cross, but He got him back when He rose from the grave. And the angel called, and the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself I have sworn. Why did He say by myself I have sworn? Because there is no higher authority than God Himself. He didn't say by this or by that, I swear. He said, by myself, by God Almighty, I swear. I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and not withheld your son, your only son, blessing 
I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and the sands which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies and your seed and your seed, all nations of the earth shall be blessed. And they were all nations were blessed and have been blessed and are currently blessed because his seed was Jesus Christ. Because you've obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men and they rose and they went together to Beersheba and Abraham dwelt there. For the next picture for me. So this is an image Here's Isaac going up there, burying the wood for his own funeral. Mm -hmm. And here's Jesus carrying the cross for his own funeral. This was meant to be a foretelling of the story of what would happen to Christ in a way that they, they at their time and us at our time can understand it. Galatians 3, 5 through 17. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him and for what? For righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. We are of faith. Why do we say that? We didn't get to see Jesus. We didn't get to put our hands in his side and feel the nail holes in his hands. But we believed in him. We are sons of faith. Oh, what does that make us? Sons of Abraham also. And daughters of Abraham. We are adopted into the family of Christ. Yes, Christ was of a Jewish descent from Abraham. So now we, as Christians, are part of Christ's family. We're not just outsiders. No, we're members of the family. We got the right to come to the dinner table. And there will be a big dinner table in the end. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles, oh that's us by the way, by faith preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying, in you all nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith, that's us, are blessed with the believing Abraham. He equals our faith. By believing the unseen. That's what we believe in. Unseen. We never got to walk with Jesus. We never got to hear the sermon on the bow. But we still believe. So we are children of faith. John 15 through 17. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son unto the world to condemn the world. Do you understand salvation is offered to every person that draws a breath on this earth in the past, present, and future? God wants everybody to go to heaven. He wants everybody to believe on Jesus Christ. He wants all people to be with Him for eternity. It's by choice that people decide to be separated for eternity from Jesus Christ. It's not God's choice. God let Jesus die for all sins of all, all time for all people if they believe. That the world through him might be saved. 
1 John 4, 8 through 10. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God is manifest towards us, that He sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sin. Go to the last slide for me. God gave Jesus to satisfy the evil that each of us have done throughout our own lives. There is no measure that we need to worry about measuring. Well, how big were your sins? How small were your sins? It doesn't matter if you sin just once in your life or you spent a lifetime of sin and you gave your life to the Lord in the last minutes of your life, you're just as much going to be going to heaven as that person who gave their life to Jesus at five years old. It's all the same to Him. Faith is faith. And if you have faith in God, then this is what awaits you. Blessed are those who do His commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates unto the city, the city of heaven to eternity. The right to the tree of life we don't really understand that. I've read the scriptures. I've read the revelations that that the 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 lines down the river of life and the and the roads going to the throne of heaven will be lined with trees with the fruit of life, and we have the right to eat that. That is a mystery that we will learn when we get there. But understand, you have been given the gifts of all of heaven. All the fruits, all the benefits, all the things that you saw in Christ's life after He returned from the grave, you will have those same abilities. There will be no hurting, no pain, no death, no restriction to travel. You understand when Jesus thought about being somewhere, He was there. They're in the room. They're afraid the Romans are coming to get them. They got the door blocked. They're not letting anybody in or out. And then Jesus just appears. He appears in this redeemed body. The same body that you will receive. You're going to have abilities and things you'll be able to do beyond any of our imagination. For one simple fact. You believe. Father, thank you for the time that you've given us in this wonderful, great story. The story of faith. I want to thank you for joining us here at Front Night Baptist Church. Whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, I hope you're getting a benefit from this series. Just on how God loves us. Once again, thank you for joining us here at Front Night Baptist Church in Coco Flip.